Crawford from Progressive Field. Jay, very impressive there he is. Looking live shot there. Great seat for today's home opener. How you doing, Jay? I'm great. Happy New Year, guys. Everybody is thrilled about what's going on with the Cleveland Guardians, with the exception of the loss of Shane Bieber. Yeah. Seven and two. Bull, G, we talked last week. What would be yep. the number of wins it would take to really get you excited? We had said six, seven, eight would break the bank. And then all of a sudden, the Shane Bieber injury happens. And gosh, you could just feel the air leave the, the room when the news hit. And now, guys, the big question is, what are the Guardians going to do to cover for the loss of Shane Bieber? Gavin Williams' injury has kind of uh, delayed his start to the season, so he's not coming uh, in the immediate future. Um, Xavier Curry had a nice uh, start down in Columbus. It looks like they're trying to stretch him out a little bit, so maybe the, he could be another starter. For now, it's Carlos Carrasco, who I don't even I don't know how to describe his his outing Saturday. Bull. <laughs> <laughs> when when do you see a team combined for two hits? Yeah, but you yeah. never felt comfortable in the game. They were walking everybody. His yeah. pitch count was high. So I don't think he's a long term answer. I don't know where they go, Bull. I really don't. Yeah, we were taught, you know, like obviously Bauer's name comes up, but the Guardians are not going down that road. I brought up to Zach Meisel guys like Zach Greinke and Johnny Cueto. I, I don't know if those guys can help anymore. If you look at their pitching prospects, they're. They're, they're only two pitching prospects above a ball, really, are Espino, who's hurt for the year, and Joey Cantillo, who's out for two months. The rest of their good pitching prospects are, you know, they're pitching an a ball. They're not ready to, to contribute, so there's no obvious answer. But, Jay, even despite that, and, and as devastating as the Bieber injury is, we kind of, we're feeling the excitement of the opening day in 7-2. How are you personally, as a massive Guardians fan, balancing that excitement opening day, excitement 7-2, and two, versus you know how much this injury hurts? Well, you know what you do, Bull? You, you compartmentalize it. And for me, I've just sort of put away the Bieber injury for today. Yeah. Um, I, watching the game on Saturday, you kind of had a sick feeling in the pit of your stomach that, you know, as much as you want to get excited about a 7-2 and two start, you know without your ace, things are going to get dreary at some point. Now, I'm watching with fascination today, Bull, yeah. to see what Tristan McKenzie does. Because yeah. as you know, in his first start of the year, he was not Tristan McKenzie. He too had some elbow issues in the offseason. He too, like Shane Bieber, decided to opt away from going for the surgery. He yeah. wanted to get back to the field sooner. Whether or not that's going to blow up in the Guardian's face and, and Tristan's face or not, we don't know. But when you look at the velocity that he was throwing with in his opening start, that's concerning to me. So no I'm going to be looking at the radar gun to see what he can top out at. And, I mean, gosh, what's crazy to me, Bull, is in watching Shane Bieber every pitch of his first two starts, there wasn't an inkling to me no. that yeah. there was anything wrong, which really speaks to how much of a gamer he is. He went out there in his second start, and he had to be in pain. He had to be. Yep. And yet, you never would have known it. He went out there. He looked great. He struck out, I think, nine guys in yeah. in his in six innings. He had 12 Ks in his first start. It just it, it speaks to the v level of toughness that he has. But next, I'm kind of holding my, my breath with Tristan McKenzie because if they lose Tristan McKenzie, too, it's a repeat of last year. Remember, yeah. last year they lost Beaver and McKenzie early on, and that was pretty much the season. They cannot withstand losing Tristan McKenzie like they did last year. It would be a devastating blow to this team. You're, you're right. Jay, um, you know, I can't help but look at, um, in the background, um, how does the, the renovations look? Blue uh, seats look awesome. Yeah, like, I, I think I, they look I, awesome. It looked, it looked crisp. Now, now, am I correct in saying they did remove some seats? Uh, they did bring the blue seats back. Uh, how are the renovations overall looking for you? Yeah, so what they've done on the lower bowl is all the seats now are blue, with the exception of a small number of seats down the left field line and a small number of seats down the right field line. This, remember, from the beginning, guys, was a two-year project. They knew it was going to take two years to completely renovate stuff. Now, one of the interesting things, and I'm going to have to move my camera here so you can see it. If you look over my shoulder here yeah. in the right field seats, mm -hmm. do, you notice, do you notice now... I got to get it. I got to get yeah. the angle right. It's open air now in right yeah. field. Where That's the, awesome. Remember those shipping, those shipping containers are gone. And Bull, That's the great. first thing I thought of 
when I walked in, I'm going to watch to see how the ball carries out to right field today. Right now, the wind is blowing to left field. But it's going to be interesting in the future to see what happens to balls that get up into that at- atmosphere. Because now, without those, without that wall being solid in mm-hmm. right field, the wind will no longer swirl. It will jet right through that opening. And I'm thinking that you could see a much higher home run total to right field this year by all players. I, I, the Guardians obviously are still kind of home run challenge, but yeah. that's going to be interesting to see how that is affected. But they also painted all of the cement uh, on the lower concourse. That's pretty much was the focus of what they wanted to do this year. They added a couple of bars. It seems to me like, and Bull, we've talked about this, baseball is almost becoming the, the sideshow. Yeah. You know, they're having yeah. all these other areas where yeah. folks can congregate and hang out, enjoy the beautiful weather, and drink beer and and, and whatnot. Um, but a lot of the changes, I'm told, the cosmetic changes that fans will really notice when they come in are going to happen after this season, into the off season, And then when we walk in for opening day 2025, it's going to look much different in here, I'm told. So we'll kind of see how all that shakes out. But really, it's interesting. You've seen a smattering of players coming out, going through some pregame running. But because opening day has been pushed back to 5 o'clock because of the eclipse. It, it's going to be – activity down here will be very light and very slow until probably around 1, 2 o'clock. Then it will pick up. I can't wait, guys, to see how these two major stories come together here today. At about 3.15, when the totality of the eclipse hits, I think that the, one of the shots that will go viral across the country – is when you have 50 ball players on the field behind me, 25 White Sox, 25 Guardians, all with their solar eclipse glasses on, looking up to see the eclipse. And I'm told from the folks at NASA who supplied the Guardians and all of their staff with the uh, eclipse glasses that the White Sox actually reached out to NASA and said, hey, can you send us a big batch too? Our folks want to watch it as well. So that's going to be really interesting to watch these two Major stories converge, and all day today over on Channel 3, beginning at 2 o'clock, we're going to be in eclipse coverage from 2 until 3.30. Then we'll shift gears after the eclipse and go to Guardians opening day coverage from 3.30 to 4. Then from 4 to 5, the Bally's pregame show will air on WKYC because WKYC has the local broadcast rights for a certain number of games in the market. So at 4 to 5, we'll carry the Bally's pregame show. And then at 5 o'clock, we begin game coverage, which will carry, obviously, all the way through the final pitch of today's opening day. So it's a big day, a lot of excitement. And um, hopefully, that right now, it's all sun. Hopefully, the clouds stay away. Yeah. They're supposed to move in in the afternoon. Right now, if the eclipse was to happen, it would be absolute perfect viewing. So we'll see if it holds. When was the, la- the last time you could remember opening day, 70 degrees? crazy yep it is crazy it's been a while i've been here at opening days where there's been snow in the air of course so you know this is a blessing now if you take a peek on the calendar and you look at i believe friday's forecast is low 40s and rain yeah so you know the deal in northeast ohio bull if you don't like the weather wait 15 minutes it'll change in this case wait a couple days it's going to change drastically but at least for now it looks like the weather gods have smiled on progressive field there is around the stadium a huge buzz of excitement. And, Bull, I can tell you, they're going to open the gates here in a short while to fans. They're doing it earlier because the, uh, the, they want people to be in place so they can see the eclipse from inside. Right. But all around the gates, all the way around Progressive Field, there are huge crowds waiting to come in. And I can't remember – I've been to a number of opening days here in a row now. I can't remember a time where I saw crowds that big – waiting to get inside six hours before first pitch. Yeah, that's awesome. Great the atmosphere today. Go ahead, Earl. Jay, what up, man? So uh, the Guardians' uh, young lineup, man, they got also a hot start hitting the ball well. They had a few days off, of course, with the, with the weather delay yesterday. What's your expectations for this Guardians lineup in this first series at home against the White Sox? Well, I got to tell you, and Bull, you know this well, This the lineup has outperformed everybody's early expectations. Oh, yeah. Now, we're not even, you know, we're not even one sixteenth of the way through the season, you know. So it's we don't we want to, you know, pump the brakes on that. But the one thing that you look at that really jumps out, and this is the stat that you have on the screen right now, 
is run differential. That's kind of the the apples to apples comparison between the leagues and, and, and amongst all of baseball. And right now, no one has the run differential that the Guardians have. And if you would have told me that nine games into the season that would have been the case, I wouldn't have believed it. Now, remember, when I get, came to you guys live from Surprise, I told you that I felt, and it was one of the things that you can't measure with a statistic, I just felt that there was a real buzz in this Guardians clubhouse. There is still a buzz in this Guardian clubhouse. In fact, my biggest fear was they were going to get off to a slow start and that good feeling would dissipate immediately. But it's going to be a real test to this clubhouse now how they hold together in the wake of the, uh, uh, the, the Shane Bieber injury. Because I firmly believe that team chemistry and camaraderie can overcome a lot. It's not going to make up for a bad team. You've got to be a good team. But that camaraderie and that chemistry can carry a good team to become a great team. It can, it can carry a great team to become a historic team. And I think it's more the good team to the great team with this club. But, Bull, the hitting has been there. Yeah. They've had clutch hitting. Andre Jimenez at second base has been an absolute wizard. Jay, I mean, he speak- just makes one great play after another. Speaking of which, let's. I, I was going to wrap it up with you. Uh, Andre, that play on Saturday, I, I assume you oh. watched it. I know you watched, That play, the flip, and then Rokio diving and keeping his foot on the base. We were talking about that before. Mm. That was incredible. Unbelievable, Bull. Yeah. And for you yeah. to see that. And now remember, what, what the second base shortstop combination is very, very tricky. Because, pardon the pun here, but they work hand in glove. And when you don't have a lot of reps together... Yeah, there's a certain there's a certain something that's missing, particularly on on difficult double play turns. But Jimenez and Rokio look like they've been playing this position together their whole lives. And it just really speaks to the level of athleticism and skill level that these guys have. Rokio has stepped in at shortstop and hasn't missed a beat. And Freeman out in center field has been, I would say, above expectations. He's been very, very good. There's been a slight drop-off from yeah. Miles Straw, but you would expect that. The guy's a gold glover. But I think Freeman has a very, very high ceiling in center field. And, Bull, every great team is strong defensively up the middle. You have to be. Yeah. And it looks like this Guardians team is going to yeah. be just fine defensively up no the doubt. middle. So if the bats can stay hot and somehow they continue. The bullpen, by the way, on Saturday, despite issuing one free pass after another, they worked out of jam after jam after jam, thanks yep. in large part to some great defense behind yeah. them. But you know, look, this thing could have legs, and let's just let's just take it to where it leads us. But right now, there's a lot of excitement around this team, and I think this is a team, despite losing Shane Bieber, I know it's going to be more difficult now, but I do think that they still could contend for the division title. Jay at the beautiful progressive field, which looks amazing. When, when Jay first popped up there for a second, I was like, why is Jay Yankee Stadium? It kind of looked a little like Yankee Stadium to me for a second with the blue seats. And, it's, the blue, and, it's the blue seats. And the opening yeah. up in the right field, which I love. I, nice. I love it. I love the way the place looks. I can't wait to go to my first game. I think I'm going to try to go next weekend. Jay, great stuff, man. We'll see awesome. you later in the week. Enjoy. Guys, right. we'll see you. Take care. Go, go Guards. Right. Go Guardians. Look good. Uh, Thanks, Jay. Look good in that. It man. does look good. I like, I like the That's open a good-looking airness. Live I, shot. The worst thing about Progressive Field to me was those those big green shipping containers. Yeah, shipping and they hadn't been there that long, but that was an awful decision. I'm glad they got rid I of. I think them. the fan experience at Progressive Field oh, as good as it is gets. top tier. No you, doubt, you you don't get no better than that. Even for a casual baseball fan, there yeah. is nothing like a summer night inside that. It's ballpark. beautiful. A warm day, just it's great. It's a great experience. Blueberry beer and hot dogs. There you go. And if you're